Hey guys, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the normal distribution in Python. And first, what we'll do is we'll come to this Wikipedia page, which is just the normal distribution, and we'll get some information out of this page and we'll write our own function. And then, following that, what we'll do is we'll go to this SciPy page, which is also containing the normal distribution, and we'll use some of the methods that they've got down here that relate to the normal distribution and we'll do a bit of a comparison to what we've done with our own function in this Wikipedia page. So let's get started. Now we're gonna to have to import a few things. So we'll go from scipy.stats import norm. And that's essentially just, as you can see here, stats scipy.stats norm. So we're just importing that. And then we're gonna need numpy. So we'll import numpy as np and we'll import matplot Pyplot as plt so that's what we will need now as I said what we're going to do is we're going to start with the Wikipedia page and we're going to create our own function so what we'll do is we'll create a function here called normal underscore PDF for probability density function and then if we come and have a look at the Wikipedia page if we scroll down here we can see the PDF is listed here so this is what we need to essentially type into the return from our function and I'll just quickly note as well if we come over here it looks like what they've got here is a smaller version but this is actually the standard normal that they've got here so it would have a mu equal to zero and a sigma equal to one so if you came back over here and you plugged a one into there a zero into mu another one into this sigma here you'd end up what um, with this what they're displaying here in the scipy docs so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to have to type this out. So we'll do that now. Oh, actually, sorry, first we'll have to, as you can see here, what we're going to need is we're going to need a sigma for our parameters. We're going to need an x and we're going to need a mu. So we'll do that first. So we'll put in an x, a mu, which is reflective of the mean and sigma reflected of the standard deviation. And then all we're going to do is go return. And this is a little bit long, but it's basically just typing out what they have there, so it's nothing too difficult. So we go sigma times mp dot square root, so numpy square root function, two times mp dot pi for pi. And then if we go mp dot exp for the numpy exponential, negative one half and then multiply by x minus mu divided by sigma and all that squared and I think I've got an additional bracket there so we'll run that and if we want to call our function we can go normal pdf and we'll just put in for our x, we'll put in a numpy array. So it's not a single x value, it's gonna be an array of three values. And we'll do a standard normal, so it's just zero for the mu and one for the sigma. If we run that, you can see that it outputs these three values. So it's essentially putting three x values in a, in array through the function. It's returning an array um, with each of the x values put through the function so you could do it with a single value and I'll just show you that if we just put in a 1 there you can see that it just outputs the 0 0.24 which was this value here now we've typed that out but what we can do is we can actually just utilize the scipy library and one of the methods that they have down here so there's the PDF method down here that says you're gonna need an X a lock that stands for location and a scale so if we go back up here it says here it says the lock or location keyword specifies the mean and the scale keyword specifies the standard deviation so you can interpret whatever the lock is equal to and the scale is equal to is mu and sigma and what we'll do here is we'll create a numpy array and we'll just use the same value, so one, two, three. And then instead of use, calling our function that we just did, we'll go norm, which we imported up here, dot PDF, which is what I just showed you down here, P 
PDF method and we pass in the X, the lock and the scale or the X, the mu and the sigma. So we pass in X to be explicit, we'll go lock equals zero and scale equals one. So again, it's a standard normal. And if we run that code, you can see it spits out the same values as what we got out of our function that we wrote up here. So it gives you a bit of an idea of what's going on in the SciPy method, the PDF method. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to um, visualize this. So we're going to change our x variable and we're going to create some values here with mp.lin space. And we want some x values that start at negative five because the normal distribution will run along the, the negative x axis to five. And we're going to have 5,000 values. If we go fig ax equals plt dot subplots fig size and we'll go with 16.6 and if we plot this now we can go ax dot plot x so it's not this one up here it's our new x down here and we'll use our own function that we wrote first so we go normal underscore pdf pass through an x a zero a one and we'll go plt.show. And so instead of passing through three values here, we're passing through 5,000 both into the plot function and through our normal function, which we wrote up there. So we run this code, and as you see, it outputs the standard normal distribution. Now, again, if we want to look at what it'd look like doing it using SciPy, all we have to do is just come down here, we copy and paste our code, we can go norm.pdf and just run that. And you can see it outputs an identical distribution. Now, if you wanted to as well, for example, if this is standard normal, but you can treat this here as shifting the distribution. So the mean might be two. So at the moment it's zero. As you can see here, it's the center of the distribution. If we went two, you can see it shifts the distribution along the x-axis to have the mean here as two. So you can play around with the parameters there if you need to. Now, what we can do as well is if we copy this, and we might wanna paste it here and have a look at the CDF, so the cumulative distribution function, so that's simple as well. All we have to do is just change the P to a C. If we come back over here, that's here. So cumulative distribution function. And if we plot that, we can run that code. And I'll just change that back to a zero. And so we can see here the cumulative distribution function for the standard normal. Now, one of the other methods in here is this RVS method, and it's to create random variates, which I guess you can think of as a realization of the random or the normal random variable. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat a bit here and we're gonna use that function to create some data. And then we're gonna use the fit function or method in the SciPy library to fit a, a, a curve to our data which I guess we've cheated to create and generate some parameters so I'll show you what I mean in more detail as I do this so we'll create a variable x rvs if we go norm dot rvs and we can go to lock so zero scale equals one size we'll have it equal to a hundred thousand so we're going to create it's, it's essentially, you can think of it as a, um, is a normal random number generator. So it's gonna give you random um, values from a normal distribution with these parameters. And it, just for re reproducibility, we'll go random state equals three. So we run that code, so that's our data. And now if we go, we'll just have a look at it. So if we go fig ax, it's plt dot subplots, fig size equals 16.6. And this time we're gonna go ax dot hist, because we want a histogram. Pass through the data that we've created just up here. 
and bins will have a thousand and we'll go plt.show you can probably already guess what this is going to look like but we'll run the code let's run that again so you've got a histogram that looks quite a lot like a normal distribution with some variability in it now if you can imagine that we didn't just create this up here using the RVS method and we had some actual real life data that we plotted and it came out when we plotted the histogram it came out like this what you what you typically might want to do is you might want to essentially fit use the scipy fit method which is down here to the data which will return our parameters mu and sigma or our location and scale so we can have the parameters of the if we're assuming that the data follows a normal distribution we'll have the parameters for that specific distribution that's come from the data so the way we do this if we go we create a variable here we go mu and then we go sigma we go norm dot fit and we just pass through our x rvs because that was our data we run that and again you can probably guess what this is but because we've obviously cheated here by making the data here but you just got to kind of imagine if this had it came from a data set that we didn't have this information to us available so if we look at mu you get negative 0 0.002 so it's very close to zero which we want because that was our location or our mean up here and as you can see there the scales ones are standard normal so when we run this sigma here you're going to expect a value very close to one and it is at 0.99.67 so now what we can do is if we if we come up here and we'll grab these two lines of code and then we'll go ax.hist and we're going to want to replot that histogram that's essentially here so if we go rvs if we go bins equals 1000 but then this time there's going to be a third parameter and we're just going to go density equals true and now we're going to go ax.plot and we're going to pass in our x values here so this x variable here that we copy down and we're going to go norm.pdf and we're going to pass our x values through the norm pdf method again and then instead of use it just putting a location equals to zero we're going to use our value here that's um, been assigned from the norm.fit so if we go location equals mu and scale equals sigma and we go line width and we'll make it pretty thick there and then if we go plt.show there and run that code what we can see here is we can see the line or the normal distribution which is essentially being generated from the parameters that were returned here mu and sigma from the norm.fit and you can see that's plotted over our um, histogram that we've essentially got from here and again obviously we've cheated in this example because we created the data from essentially a normal random number generator but you're gonna see, uh, you could follow a process if you um, a similar process if you had a data set that when you plotted the histogram it looks like this you, you suspect that it's normal or you might have some sort of information to tell you that it is normal but you don't know what the parameters are you can get the parameters by doing this with the fit method and then if you wanted to visualize it you could do something like this and have the the line plotted over the histogram and now just finally these are a little bit trivial but I'll put it in here anyway for completeness so if we went norm.mean and 
obviously we know what the mean is because we're put, inputting the, the mu value in here. But if we do that and then we just go median var for variance, STD for standard deviation, and you print out there and you can see that there's the mu, the mu. I mean, the, I mean, sorry, there's the mu value and um, obviously your median, your variance and your standard deviation. And just to show you where they come from there, just also in the scipy docs down the bottom here. So median, mean, var for variance and STD for standard deviation. So I hope that video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And thanks for watching.